morning. This is Founder Leroon. I'm going to try to create an encounter from scratch. I do have a few modules loaded up, and I wanted to also give out some shout outs to the artists and the people that have contributed to this. First of all, I'd like to thank Rob Tui for supporting Fantasy Grounds College. And also, I would like to. Um, I would like to say thank you and also for helping us in the college, uh, Chris McDermott. We know him as Map Hatter. He is the one who creates all the map meanders, so we'll be using his maps today. And um, also Bernardo Hasselman. Uh, we're going to use some of his tokens today. He makes some really incredible tokens. And the music here is by Plate Mail Games. So, Plate Mill Games has a large variety of background audio that you can use for your, your enhancements for your uh, tabletop audio. So, hats off to those folks and also to all the supporters of Fantasy Grounds College. The patrons, um, also I'd like to thank uh, the Digital Dungeon Master for uh, helping us out and also for the indirect support from Fantasy Grounds itself, Smiteworks, and whatnot. So without further ado, I'm going to get started. Um, right now, I pretty much have a blank slate. I do have a few modules loaded. And today, I'm going to make a themed encounter centered around a wizard's tower. Now, I couldn't wait to find a usage or some sort of excuse to use some of these beautiful maps that Chris has made. And I really want to use some of Bernardo's tokens with it. And I want to show people out there how they can use Fantasy Grounds fairly uh, efficiently and quickly once you learn to get around. And that's one of the things we teach at the college is we want to show you guys how to use the software. Not just from a player or a DM standpoint, but as an individual. Maybe you just want to mess around with it. You know, maybe you don't want to run a game. Maybe you want to create content or something like that. So this is a good way to uh, show you how you can use Fantasy Grounds. Uh, this is just one of many thousands of ways that you'll find um, that you can use the tools and the ease of use for the system itself. So I think I'll get going here. So right now, I have a blank slate in Fantasy Grounds. It's basically really not much here. I just have the combat tracker up. I have my default setup active. Uh, I got my dice tower over here. I got all this room here to work with. So if I needed more room, I could shrink this up a little bit, but I'm not gonna do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is think of the theme. For the sake of the show, I've already chose to do a wizard's tower. And I just happen to have Chris's, uh, one of his meander map modules loaded. So I'm going to click on library, and I'm going to show you what I already have loaded here. So I have the FTC pregens that I made, just to make things a lot quicker and smoother, so I'm not building characters. Um, I have the Arcane Augurum, the Fantasy Grounds Meanders pack, which is available on the, um, Fantasy Ground Store and on Steam. This is one of Chris's, uh, one of his map modules. I have the core rule books loaded, and I have Rob Tui's conditions and effects, and some of his trap tables, because I might use a trap in this. But other than that, that's pretty much all I have loaded here. Now, if I wanted to load more stuff, I can. Um, I might load some of Kobold Press's modules, or one of the other third party, um, producers, you know, or maybe even some from the DMs Guild. But for right now, I think at the moment this is a good start. The first thing I'm going to do is, if you've ever used Chris's Meander Packs, he does include quite a bit of uh, material here. So I'm going to go ahead and start digging in. So I'm going to go to the story tree. And as you can see, this has a story and product information. So from here, I'm going to expand this out. He goes over what this is. Um, so for this particular pack that I'm looking at, here's the cover for it, the Arcane Augurum. 
the meanders map back. Um, there is a promo here for it. Uh, basically, um, Arcane Agarum is a sprawling college university of the Arcane, and it's got an ornate marble Arcane library, and it stretches all the way to the towering nine levels uh, tower that offers the illusion of height as players climb higher with visual cues such as increasingly distant foundation and blurring features. I really, really like this. There's all kinds of cool stuff in this in this map pack. Uh, the maps are sized for Fantasy Grounds. They're under half, half a megabyte or so. Uh, they're right around um, 50 or 60 pixels per grid that you can place manually. Um, they run really well and really smooth. They're very colorful. So you shouldn't have too many problems with these. And they also connect together with other maps. So let's take a look at the um, random map table. So if I open this up, what I get here is a random table. I think I'm going to use this in conjunction with some sort of story um, kind of created stuff. Because Chris will have all kinds of story stuff. And then if you wanted to pick one um, out of just out of the ordinary or you wanted something more unique and not so random, you have this list here. And then you have this link to this map panel, which will give you the option to choose which map you prefer. I think I'm going to wing it. I'm going to go for something random. And some of Chris's uh, map packs actually have story uh, entries. I think this one more focuses on the, the, the maps themselves. But this is a really nice map pack. It's, it's beautiful. So I'm going to go through this, and I'm going to check out how and what is in this pack, and basically just see how how this uh, map pack looks. Okay, so we're going to do the Arcane Augurum. I'm going to roll. I don't have to worry about the visibility. I don't have anyone connected to the table. So I'm going to go ahead and roll. Alchemical Laboratory, whoa. Alright, so that's cool. Ah. So this is one of the levels on uh, Chris's map packs that are in the large uh, nine-story tower. And this is the laboratory. Really cool. Um, right now, it is kind of a lower resolution to fit Fantasy Grounds, but if you buy Chris's... Uh, map packs on his website you can get a higher resolution photos that you can print but this is really cool um, one thing I do need to do is I want to consider the title so I'm gonna unlock and I might I'm gonna leave this because it's it's titled properly but this I might just put wizard's lab or strange laboratory there we go Strange Laboratory. Now I'm going to click this um, identified item. So if anyone um, encounters this, it'll just say Strange Laboratory instead of Wizard's Tower Alchemical Laboratory. So I mean, that, that's kind of a dead giveaway. The the photos here kind of give it away as well, but I don't want to give the, the title away. I just want people to see the more of the roleplay aspect of it. Another thing I need to do is consider locking the grid up and making a grid. So I'm going to right click on the map, add layers, and set the grid. I'm zooming in on these bricks so I have a point of reference. If I drag this out to about, yeah, right about there looks good. Yeah, I think that'll look nice. Pretty close. Yep. I might have to adjust it just a hair. It looks pretty good. It's not bad. Okay. 
So just to see what it looks like um, token wise, I'm going to grab one of the tokens here that I've chose earlier. And I wasn't sure which exact tokens it's going to use, so I'm using Bernardo's. There's two wizards here. Let's see. There is two wizard-like characters in here. Spellcaster here is an elven wizard. I think I'll use that one. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So just for a point of reference, I'll use that. Um, that is not how you use Fantasy Grounds as far as uh, characters and things go. This is just a point of reference so I can get an idea of the scale. So I'll leave that there for right now. So we're going to use this Elven Wizard for the uh, laboratory. So now I'm going to think about creating this Elven Wizard. And not to mention, um, what is this going to consist of? Like, do I want to detail all the stuff on the tables? Do I want to create some kind of, you know, a uh, underling or an apprentice? Do I want to make this an encounter for the party to come up across? So this is what I have to consider. So before I do any of that, let me adjust the lines here a little bit. So see, they're just a touch off. So I'm going to click this uh, grid looking thing, this pound key. And I'm going to click the down arrow just a touch. And that helps line up that. And then I'm going to move the line over a little, see if that helps. Yeah. So already that looks a lot better as far as scale and size goes. There we go. So it's pretty good. And the token itself, I think looks good right about there. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and delete this off. This is just a point of reference here. So I just right click on it and delete the token. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have some sort of template or some type of uh, NPC that I can use to create the wizard. So let me see. I'm going to crack open the, uh, the monster manual. So go on NPCs. And I'm going to look up wizard. Oh. Okay, so there's an archmage, a drow mage, and then a mage. Now the mage is more or less what I'm looking for for levels. As far as, you know, archmage is way too powerful. So I'm going to stick with the arch, or excuse me, the regular mage. And I'm going to make a copy of this. So I'm just going to drag this back in here. And now I have a copy. So now that I've made a copy, the reason I'm doing that is I'll be able to edit it. So at this point, I can unlock this, and I'm going to assign my new fancy token. Just drag that from the token pile to here. And this is an elven mage. So I'm going to rename this. That way it's a little bit more unique. And I'm going to change the non-ID name. I'm going to give him an actual um, like a wizardly name. This elven mage is the non-ID. So if you don't know his name yet, but you know he's elf and he's magical. 
So I'm going to go online and look for some cool elven wizard name. Lucky. I found a really cool name. Um, Ransler. Really like it. So, Ransler it is. Or Ronsler, however you want to say it. There's also Elasios, Glenkian, Balnorian, Zidlar. Persian. I like that. Persian. Adithus. Lumiere. Hernan. Leoden. Thanoran. <laughs> they have one in here called Farkin. He's the Farkin wizard. Uh, Basilar. Balden. Morik. It's kind of a cool name. I think I'm going to go Morik. That's a cool name. So I'm going to change that around a little bit and use the name Morik. Morik the Mage. No, that's too generic. Just gonna call him Mark. So now I have a custom item. I'm gonna make a custom section here because I don't wanna pollute all the other collections here. So I click the edit button, click this little plus button to add a new category. The default is group one. Just gonna call it Wizard's Tower. And we'll leave it at that. And now I gotta find Merrick. Change the name. There he is. Wizard's Tower. There we go. So now Merrick is in his own category. So now I wanna work on Merrick a little bit. So he's about, I guess, uh, fourth or fifth level or so, based off of his challenge rating and his stats. So I think I'm going to adjust these things around a little bit. So he has a 12 uh, armor class and 15 with mage armor. That's pretty cool. I can handle that. Might give him a few more hit points. Okay, a couple. Give him a little bit more strength. Okay, I give him a 15 dex. Con is gonna stay. Intelligence is pretty high, I like that. Wisdom is high. Charisma. I give him a 12. Any four languages. So he knows common, elvish, primordial, and maybe one other. Um, I think I'm going to give him Abyssal. Passive Perception of 11. That's based off his wisdom. He knows Arcana, history. He has his saving throws up here. 
Um, type, any race. Put elf here. I'm gonna make this guy lawful neutral. Make him somewhat strict and whatnot. I'm gonna leave his spells. I like his spell list that he has here. Pretty interesting. He has a melee weapon, which is a dagger, which is fine. Um, I might add a quarter staff. And basically, you can just alter this here. So. If you're going to give him a staff, you can just change that. I think we're good. We don't need to change the dagger. He relies mostly on his magic. And there's all his spells. So that, that's pretty good. I, I like the spells. I'll keep them. They're pretty interesting. He's got a good balance of spells. Usually I'll go in and change all that stuff, but I think it's pretty good. Now let's check the other tab. This just talks about um, the mages themselves and familiars. So this guy speaks abyssal, so maybe a quasit or an imp, something tiny that you can use as a, as a little friend or an ally. So might do that. So Merrick is pretty much done. I didn't want to spend a lot of time on that, but yeah, he's, he's pretty much good to go. So that is a good thing. Now, select this. I'm going to put him on the combat tracker see what he looks like. Actually, an encounter would be better. So again, I'm making a new section. And I'm gonna make an encounter here. He's in his laboratory when he's confronted. I'll just say Merrick stand. It's kind of a tough fight here. So here is Merrick. I'm gonna go to counter. So there we go. I think I'm going to make his little um, sidekick. He needs his uh, little dude to help him out. So let's get his familiar out here. Let's see. I'm going to unfilter this to all. And I'm going to look for a closet. So here's this little closet. This little guy gives him a lot of little secrets and gets him in trouble too. Yeah. I'm fine with the little pog, that's cool. Being that he's so tiny, it'll be hard to see him. So I'm just gonna add the closet to the actual um, encounter. Unless I want to customize them and make them unique. I, I don't think I'm going to do that for this. So I'm going to unlock this. Drag that over. So now... The little closet and Merrick are in encounter together. And that just boosts that encounter up a little too. So there we go. 
So now I'm going to place this pin on this map. So if the party makes it here... There's the encounter. I'm going to have Merrick standing back here somewhere. So the little closet is going to be hiding. Back in here. But Merrick himself is going to be back in his lab pulling out some books out of his library. So he size pretty good. Alright. Where'd the little closet go? Huh. Oh, I know what I did wrong. There's that. Close, delete that. Start over. Okay. America's here. The closet is here. I didn't drag the actual token over. I should drag that, not the encounter tokens. So, there's the closet. There's Merrick. There we go. And when I close that encounter, it, it'll close the, the images themselves. But if I open the encounter back up, and I hit this down arrow, they'll be on the map, but they will not be visible. So they're all ready to go. So if the party members come up here and try to do anything, come to this landing, that's when these guys will be in their lab working. And there is somewhat of a doorway in here. So when they reach up here to this landing, there's a bunch of uh, drawers and all kinds of little trinkets here in these cubby holes and a shelf. So when they come up here, it's kind of cluttered. So they could probably only go through here one by one. So this would be kind of a tough challenge, especially if they don't have the room. And as you can see, there's this here, where the landings are. Where they could go upstairs, or coming from upstairs is where this is at. And they're pretty high up in the tower, it looks like. So this is probably level three, but yep. This would be a, a good challenge for a mid-level party. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that. And I'm going to drag this down to the hotkeys. That's pretty much all I need for a quick encounter. It didn't take too long. If I had actually just been working and not explaining, I probably, probably could have done a little bit quicker. And, uh, you know, you could showcase some of these tokens. They're very beautiful. Um, Chris's maps are just phenomenal. I mean, I really like his uh, his design and coloring. I mean, these maps are are just over the top as far as beauty. Let's see, images and maps. Here's a couple of it. So look at that. This is like a Wizards Academy dormitory. Um. There is a red carpeted hall, a main chamber. So this is where the students would be. There's the tower, the menagerie level. It's like north towards the top. So here's for all the animals and eggs. And I guess you can call them victims or experiments are kept. Some pigeons are up here. So this is a really cool... Uh, uh, section here um, because you go spiral up the staircase you come out on this landing and you kind of have an outdoor porch and there's it might be partially covered but you have all these animals stored up here so it's pretty cool anyhow um, I want you guys to take a look at the stuff and just kind of look at how simple it is to just piece together something you don't have to have a big campaign or a module to have fun. 
and it wouldn't take long for you to, you know, to get get a counter going. Uh, you can really just test your counters before you even start. You can have people join your table and kind of just test this one encounter to see if it's too overpowered or not. There's all kinds of really cool things you can do with Fantasy Crowns. So hopefully that helps you a little bit, give you some ideas, and also show you what's out there. So again, this is Founder Layroon. I'm going to sign off. I want to thank you for watching this video. Leave comments if you wish. And if you want help with uh, Fantasy Grounds or just with creating your own content in general or learning how to DM or just be a better player or just to learn about Dungeons & Dragons or any other role-playing game in that matter, uh, come on in to Fantasy Grounds College. Just go to fantasygroundscollege.net and on the front page there will be a Discord invite where you can go straight to our community where the live members are. You can go to the website and sign up with, for classes, and we have streaming events and one-shot games. And if you want to help us out and uh, help people learn how to use the software and how to DM or you know how to be a developer or whatever it is that you're good at, please join us. Uh, we, we really appreciate that sort of thing, and that is one of the premiums that we have in our college is people. So. The more people with talent and ideas, the better the community gets. And I can't emphasize that more. So thank you, and hopefully I will see you around. Goodbye.